G'day everyone. I'm gonna have a play with a very simple watercolor. Um, I never remember the names of my watercolors, so I'm just gonna show you my tray. And I've actually write the number, the names of the paints in here because I just can't remember. I'm trying to learn it as I go. And then I've written down here things like my warm color scheme and my cool color scheme, and then how to make black, but I already have a black. So I've got my little tray and I'm not sure if you can see, but I've actually added water in these already so that I'm ready to go. So I'm not taking up too much of your time. And I'm gonna create um, a little bit of a wash. So I had a new brush, which I put in water to soften it for a start. And this isn't an expensive brush. This is about, um, this is only a few dollars. And I bought this from a company called Zart. I do have two very expensive brushes that I've purchased um, from a different place. And you know what? They're so expensive, I'm actually too nervous to use them. So they just sit on the side and look pretty. And now I've got to buy a, a watercolour case because I've got to look after these expensive brushes. But never mind. Okay, so I haven't drawn anything and I always have a little test sample on the side to work out my colours generally. Now see that little dot that I've accidentally dropped in there? That's now has to become a piece of the artwork. So I'm just gonna create a little circle of a wash in there. And then I'm going to do another up here. So it's gonna, cause I just found a picture off Pinterest and I was thinking what's something nice and easy that people could follow along and copy with. And we add a third in here. So it's like doing upside down teardrops. So you can see this is a little darker here and then it becomes lighter. Um, so that's sort of like a gradated sort of a wash. Give my brush a wash. And I have two water containers that I've just got. that are old butter containers, one for clean water and one to wash my brush in. And then I have a dirty tissue that I just reuse all the time just to dry my brush. And then I've got my colour, my little test. And there's another little teardrop up there. And that's something in my paint that I'm going to lift off and get rid of. Now I'm going to make the next one a little bit darker. So if I want to make the wash darker, then I need to add more paint. Oh, that's not very, that's not much darker. Now watercolours is different to paint painting with your other acrylics okay now i have this in a watercolor pad it's 185 gsm um, and it's not taped down or anything it's just um add a little bit of a slant but you can tape your watercolor paper down and then i'm going to get a little splash of green In there I'm gonna get a little bit of a different tone of green for a little bit of color and then I'm gonna have a play with some blue and a bit darker need it a bit lighter and then I'm gonna add another teardrop now see how the line has actually gone darker on one side and lighter on the other you can work with that sort of stuff. And I'm going to add another one. And another. And that's about it for the watercolor painting. Now that has to dry and then I'm going to get a fine liner or a marker of some sort and put in the rest of the detail. And that's my son calling out. Okay, my watercolour is dry. I actually just put it in front of the fire for a few minutes and that's just dried really quickly. And I wanted to show you my collection of pens. So this is a point four, and I want to have a look at the mark that it'll make on the paper before I choose 
which one I'm going to use. That was a 0.5. And we've got a new puppy in the house that you can probably hear. That's a 0.6, which I like for this piece. What's this? This is, I don't know what point it is. Uh, that's quite nice, but there was, oh yeah, that's okay as well. And that one's quite nice as well. And that's a 0.7. So I think for this exercise, I'm going to use this one. Okay, so sketching for my piece few little basic lines and marks so that's my center so I'm going to start off a little off center and do a bit of a squiggle up and do some little ticks now they're not perfect they're not all the way down the same and that comes up as well And then that's going to get a loop. And that's also going to have another little loop. Now that line's a little bit too light. So I'm going to see what that looks like a little bit darker. It has to come down now. Okay, another one that goes up and through. And some ticks. So it's quite simple, a line, some ticks and some circles so far. Okay, next, a little bit of a crossover thing to my piece and that comes up with a circle. So there was a confidence in that line. Is it, I knew where it's going to go, the direction it's going to go in. That little whole sketchy thing of, you know, it has its place, don't get me wrong. Um, but there's also, you know, you can have your confidence in your mark making as well. If you muck it up, not hardly anyone's going to be able to tell. I'm probably going to have to show you my puppy. Okay, so I'm feeling a little bit more confident in what I'm doing now. So, you know, the lines come out a little bit easier. And that's supposed to be done. Okay. You can do that enjoy i'd love to see it if you have a go of it let me know how it goes